Hi, welcome along. This is going to be a video looking at the four different types of timers that we have from Siemens. So all I've done so far is got an FC off to the side here, which is currently open in the, the main working window, and I've called it via OB1, so it's been called. So we're going to explore each of these timers. We'll start off with a TON timer or timer on delay. So place one in. So I've just taken the blank box from up here, which is an empty box, placed it in, and then click to label it obviously using the ton. Another one we're going to use is a tough. So I'll just prep it now. And I'll add the name itself is perfectly fine. I'm just going to drag that and put it into the next network ready for use at a later time. The input here um, that we have set up uh, is going to be called S1 for our first push button, which is I0.0. .0. So we use S2 for this one and an open command and S2. So we're going to explore the difference between uh, an on delay timer or a ton and an off delay timer or TOF. So we'll do the preset time just for three seconds, keep it nice and easy, 3S, and then Siemens will fill in the rest with the correct formatting, 3S again. If you don't place in uh, an S command, so for instance if I just type in 5 for example, it will default to T hash 5 MS which is actually milliseconds. Uh, so just be careful, make sure you always get your, your correct format. Output wise, we're going to control an output of each of them as well. So the first one is just going to be Q0.0, .0, which happens to be labeled E for the set of commands that I'm using, and Q0.1, which is labeled R. So this timer is an on delay timer. So the premise of this should be that when activated via S1, this timer will give it a delay of three seconds before that particular output turns on. And will stay on all the way until we lose that input S1. And then for the off delay timer, as soon as we get our input here from S2, the timer triggers and activates our output instantly. And then when we lose our input S2, this timer will time for three further seconds before R goes off. And that's what we should be able to experience. So this is the changes I've made to the program. So I click my download button, click load, and we should be able to monitor live. We see all the elements go live green on the left hand side and we see these sections go as well. So we'll move that across and we should be able to watch on the camera system as well. So we're looking for an input of S1. If I press and hold, you can see after three seconds, my output E turns on. And as soon as I release my input S1, my E goes off. Anything less than three seconds, you can see in the left hand side, my timer is automatically resetting back to zero. Okay, so a timer on delay needs that to be on permanently. Three seconds later, my E turns on. And then when I lose my input, the output also goes off at the same time. The second one, which is an off delay timer, you see as soon as I press the button here, I'm getting an output R. And when I release my button, R is staying on for a further three seconds. And again, there is a reset function as well, in that if I press uh, to get my output R, let go, you see it begins to time. But if I then press the button again, you see it resets back to my three seconds ready to count down. So, so it's only when I release and do not have my input for a complete three seconds in total that I'm able to get R to go off. And that is a quick overview of an on delay and an off delay timer. So let's look at another two sets of timers. And that's going to be a TP, which is seen in a previous set of videos. But TP is a timer pulse. Again, let it label itself perfectly fine. I'm just going to reuse my S1 command here. Preset time, we'll do, let's do four seconds for this one, just to see a visual difference. The output will be the next one along, is Q0.2, which happens to be labeled C1, but again, on my system, all we're observing here is lights being operated. And on that set, I may as well use I0.2 which is my labeled SWG. The other one, and the final one we're going to look at, is what's called a TONR, or T-O-N-R. So 
So it's an on-delay timer, but it has a retentive nature to it, or it remembers how long has currently timed, which is different to how a tom timer is. So again, input, I just go to the next available one, I have 0 0.3, which happens to be labeled SWR. Uh, preset time, let's go for four seconds this time. And then a Q output of Q0.3, which happens to be labeled C2 in my tag table. The one difference you'll notice in this is that the R is a reset, um, which is required. On a ton timer, when you lose your input, in this case S1, it automatically resets your timer back to zero. On this one, because it remembers or retains how long has currently timed, losing your input should not automatically therefore lose your timer back to zero. So we need a separate input to there to, uh, to make that go back to the reset position, which I'll just use an X available input along, which is I0.4. And that's going to be called R3 in my example. So let's download these changes that I've made. You see here on the left hand side, this is the bit with orange and blue that is different. So I click on the download I've highlighted here, press and load, and then it all goes back to being the correct position. So the network three as it is, which is a TP timer, time, TP is a timer pulse. And effectively what happens here, no matter the length of time of input coming into a TP, your output will only ever be on for whatever your PT amount of time is, which is four seconds. So whether I have SWG on for 0.1 of a second or a year, the output for that will still only ever be uh, four seconds worth. And then the final one, which is a timer on delay with the retentive nature, I've got SWR, I0.3, which is triggering it, and then 4 is going to be the reset for it. So let's observe it uh, via the camera. So let's look at the timer pulse first of all. So TP 0 0.2, pressing that, you see activate, I can let go, and I still only get my output for the 4 seconds, which is the TP. So either I keep it on for very short, I get four seconds worth. Or I press and keep it on for a long time and still the output only stays on for four seconds amount. And then I would then have to turn off that input and then put it back on again before I got that output to re-energize. And then the final one, a ton R, timer on delay retentive. We have the I0.3 which is SWR, so you see I press, you can see it time, and then when I let go of the button, you can see it now stopping to time, just above the timer here. So if I follow the mouse, the timer is certainly shown as one second, 219 milliseconds. I press it again, and then let go, it times for another period. We're now at two seconds, 166 milliseconds. It still has not met the PT amount of time. Once this time at the top reaches PT amount of time, we will then trigger the output, so I'll press and hold it until we reach that point. And I can lose the input again. So SWR is currently off. The timer has reached its elapsed, or it's, it's time I'm aiming for, the PT time. The output's on, I then need to trigger R3 input, press the button, you see it now goes off. So I can press, and I can accumulate my time, press at various points, until it finally equals four seconds worth. There it is now. And then I have to press the next button along, which is my reset effectively called R3. And as soon as I press that, I lose my output. And that is all four versions of timers shown.